Jack them up, boys. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and and make use of it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. What a little, I mean, he really ain't a little man, is he? Can I have a hug? Yeah, I'm taking a hug. What a doll. Y'all know I'm partial to them little cowboys anyway. Um, good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to be here with y'all. I know y'all can't tell. <laughs> I turned uh, yesterday, and I don't feel one bit, one bit different than I did yesterday. So it don't count. Right? It's just a number anyway, right? So I am a little smarter than I used to be. Um, I have a little bit more of I don't care what you think about me than I did in the past because when you get my age, I just want to play. I want to play. So if y'all want to play, y'all come to my house and we'll play, okay? We'll figure out something. I might make you clean for a little bit, but we'll play. We'll play. Um, I'm always grateful to be here. We're fighting back tears this morning. Um, y'all pray for loose mother's family y'all know I, she's mine her mom she's so graceful that or gracious that she lets me share her babies and um their grandmother is passing she's not there yet but she's passing so our prayer is that she go peacefully and that um her mom will have peace that the family will have peace because we don't want them to go that's just nature right we know where she'll be and I know she's up, when she goes, she'll get the place ready for the rest of us, right? I know where my folks are. Everybody's like, I lost my husband. I said, I don't lose mine. I know exactly where he is. He ain't lost. <laughs> He's not. But it took me a minute to get over that. And there's still days that Lou and I look at us and go, oh, my gosh, I can't quit thinking about him today. Because he was good. I liked him. I didn't just love him. I liked him. That's a good place to be. I know y'all are the same way. Because y'all smile when I see y'all together. That's a good place to be. This song is one of my, has become one of my favorites. And I might have sang it when I was here last because I don't remember. I don't keep track of that stuff. I just sing what I think God wants me to sing. And uh, yeah, yeah, I had a little lady tell me, I don't remember even where we were. She's like, you know, I don't like all those new songs. You're going to sing some old ones, right? And I went, I hadn't planned on it. So I did end it with an old hymn. But that, that'll mess with your head a little bit if you're not careful. And then I got in the car and I went, you know what? I'm going to do what God tells me to do, and she'll have to live with it. I love her, but she ain't my judge, and she sure ain't my boss. God's my boss. When you get my age, you know who your boss is, right? Because I done tried all that other stuff and none of that worked, but God works for me. He works for me. So good morning, Mercy. <laughs> I always forget to turn it off. <laughs> it woke y'all up, though, so I'm really not mad about it. All right, come on, Lou, let's sing. Y'all noticed I did not say sing. I said sing. Let's sing. Because we're country. She told Doug this morning, and Lori says she just country. Is what it is, right? Can't get it out of her. I can go to Tannenack, right? But I don't like it. 
<laughs> so if y'all don't want to be embarrassed, don't go to town with me. Go ahead. You ready? Okay. This is a new song, and we've been working on it a whole day. Yeah. Well, I like to learn the song so I don't have to look at the words, but that 65 kind of, you know, struggling well, and there's, with it. And there's two versions to the song, and I had learned the other version, and she learned the other version. Yeah, and so in the car this morning, we're deciding where we want to split it up and everything, and I keep missing my part. Go figure. It's fine. Yeah, I don't care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my Me goodness. Too. I have it on repeat. Yeah. I like the yeah. one with the little rap part in the middle of it. <laughs> rap it. She's like, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yes. No matter yes. what. No matter what. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to sing a couple, and then you come back and finish, and then I'll, I'll preach. I finally admitted I can, I can preach. Woo-woo. Woo-woo. That was hard for me, y'all. I was a singer, not a preacher, but it's okay. Um, I'm going to sing something about that name. And then um, end with one that probably going to make Lou cry and then ask her to sing. So that's kind of mean, but that's the way it is. <laughs> Singing when you got a runny nose is not that fun. But we do it anyway because y'all love us, right? We're home. I feel at home with y'all. We do things a little different at, your church, at this church than we do at others because we are comfortable. You know what I'm saying? It is supposed to be that way because I guarantee you what went on at the party yesterday, I probably wouldn't have done with anybody else but my family. I wouldn't have stuck my finger in the cake and licked it. You know, I wouldn't have twirled while they were singing to me. Um, But you know what? Life is too short not to have fun. I don't think God's a God of serious all the time. I know there's times when we have to be serious. I get that. But I don't like it. I, I live in the white zone, and I like it there. So y'all, if y'all want to join me there, y'all come on. So something about that name. And he gave us the authority to use his name. That's just real huge, isn't it? I think sometimes we sing and we say the things that we've been taught or we've heard, and we don't really take them to heart. They're not true to us. Yes, it's kind of like, you know, I think I've talked to y'all about Bible stories before. There are no Bible stories. They're not stories. It's a history book. It's an event. But if I call it it a story, then it's not real to me. So I have to change it and make it, it's real. Anyway, rabbit trail. Y'all got that one for free. All right. Oh, yesterday morning I step out to me shed and there's a little squirrel sitting, just sitting up pretty as you please out there. And I said, that looks a little squirrely to me. What's he doing out there? I think he was stalking me a little bit. You know, the rabbits, the lizards follow me. Sometimes I walk out the door and they'll run ahead of me. And it's like, uh-uh, y'all got, yeah, they got, I don't do crawly. Anything that don't blink, mm-mm. no, not doing it, ain't doing it. So, yeah, that's why I have to pray a lot. <laughs> this next one is called uh, No Doubt About It. And it talks about hearing the angels, the angels choir, the angel choir singing. And y'all, I don't know about y'all, but that intrigues me. I want to hear them sing, because I know how much I love to hear y'all sing, Lori, up here in worship. Can you imagine the angels? That's good, right? It's going to be pretty, so pretty. So if you know it and want to sing it with me, y'all sing too. This is a new song to me, but somebody, well, new song to sing. And I just started singing it, and... Sorry, got that runny nose. It's okay. Um, I got to find it. We swapped because she got a new iPad. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, but I got to find it from mine to hers real quick. Oh, thank you. Take the whole, just keep pulling up. <laughs> um, Somebody had asked me if we sang this song, and we're like, no. And I was like, I've heard it several times, and I played it on the way home, and I was like, I think I need to sing this song. And um, it's, it's the goodness of God. And it's so, so good because sometimes we get so focused on the things that happen to us that we forget to celebrate the good things that happen to us. You know, when people look back on 2020, they look at all the bad things, but 
focus on the good thing. Our land got paid off in 2020. I got a new car in 2020. There's so many good things that we need to focus on and push the bad aside so we're focused more on the good that we're bleeding positivity over to other people. So that way you're overflowing, <laughs> kind of like a tank. How many times have you left that hose running in the water tank? Yeah. You know, got in trouble a couple times, but it was crystal clear when you came back, right? So it overflowed, it got all the gunk and the yuck out of there, and it started spilling over the good stuff. So that's how we need to be in our life. So I'm going to find it. I don't, oh, there it is. We good. I don't know about y'all, but I think she could sing the dictionary. <laughs> I used to say I let her go with me to, so she made me look good. I'm fixing to make her quit going with me. <laughs> Girl can sing. Um, I'm grateful to be here, and I'm grateful that Dave and Kathleen trust me enough to bring the word. And, you know, I said a while ago that I finally can call myself a preacher. Well, in the Bible it says, I believe the dictionary preacher is, takes the, shares the good news. I'll get it out in a minute. So, yeah, we're all preachers, right? If we're sharing the good news, and I promise you, I don't remember a lot of things because I don't repeat them. So I've trained myself, if I don't want to remember something bad, I just don't talk about it. I, somebody will say, don't you remember blah, blah? I'm like, nope, don't, don't want to. Not going to talk about it. Care anything about it. Anyway, in John 20, John 1, 29... This was one of my scriptures this week, and I just want to start with it. It says, the very next day, John saw Jesus coming to him to be baptized, and John cried out. He didn't whisper. He cried out, look, there he is. Have y'all ever had somebody come into your house expecting them? I used to, I, you know how far my house is from the gate. When I knew that Amber and the, the older girls before the twins were born were coming, I'd tell her, I said, let me know. Call me, let me know when you are about 10 minutes out, and I'm going to walk up there and meet you. Because I wanted those little girls to know that they were so special to me. Look, there he is. Why do we, why do we push down our feelings for the Lord? I scream like a banshee at the ball games. That one's mine. Go, Becca. Go, Ma. Go, Joe. Yeah, that one's mine. Woohoo! I am not a bit embarrassed. So why would I not, if I saw Jesus' face, whew, there he is, Lorraine, there he is, come on, let's go. Well, I kept doing that with those little girls for years and years, and so we, one day we were driving into, I forgot what the name of that little town was that they lived in, and I look up, and there those baby are standing on the corner. Look, there she is. See, you're going to get back what you give. If you want a friend, you're going to have to be one. And I'm talking to myself. I am. I'm happy all by myself. Just am. Me and God content in the me shed. Don't know why. I just like it there. But once I'm out, I'm good. We can go party, play, kiss, hug, whatever y'all want to do. That's not even my message. <laughs> my message today is God's unconditional love. I am fully convinced, I've convinced myself that God loves me unconditionally. I don't have to earn his love. I don't think that talent has to earn your love. You love that boy because he's yours, right? Well, I'm God's. When I accepted him as my Savior, he came to live in my heart. And I have to remind myself that he's in there. No matter what, if I make a mistake, if I, if I get mad... I try real hard. I don't like to be mad. It makes me feel bad, real bad. I used to be mad all the time about something. But when I go to him, he didn't say, nope, I don't want nothing to do with you. You're, too, you're just mean. No. I think God says, look, there she is. There she is. That makes me happy to think that. In the Bible, it says he sings over me. Y'all know what that means to me, right? Because I love to sing. God sings over me. I want to make him so real that, that you can almost feel him coming to love on you this morning. He loves you. 
no matter how bad you think you are, God loves you. He made you. I'm going to tell you what, I got back into crocheting a little bit. Finally can get that needle back in my hand. And the things that I make, I, I take a lot of pride in. If, it, if that stitch didn't work, I pull it out and do it again. I'm proud of that. Not prideful. I don't think I'm prideful. I made my kids. I'm proud of that. You can't talk bad about my kids. I can fuss at them, but you can't. The grizzly bear that lives inside of me will come out fast. There ain't no putting her back in if you're talking about my kids. And the grandbabies, oh my goodness. Every generation in your family gets more precious and more precious. I got a little blue-eyed, blonde-haired, dimpled doll that loves her nanny. She didn't say nanny, it's nanny. And what you need, what you want. You want to go somewhere, let's go. She broke her leg. She's not even two years old yet and broke her leg. She slipped in the, in the pool or their little play thing. And uh, Megan would send us pictures because she wasn't supposed to walk on it. And she was army crawling. This is the most tenacious little toot I have ever met in my life. She's like, no, I'm going. Well, now she's walking on it. Yeah. And uh, she took her to the doctor. And she's like, doc, I don't know what to do. I can't keep her from walking on it. He said, the only way you can keep her from walking on it is to sit on her. She's not even two yet. She's going to do what she wants, right? I mean, she, she suggests she sits down, but baby's in there helping her nana. She calls her Nana, doesn't she, Nona? Sweep and mop in the kitchen. She sent me pictures with this little purple cast on her leg, and I was like, that's my girl right there. That's who I want to be when I grow up. Uh, yes, I want to be that tenacious. When I ask you what God's unconditional love means to you, can you think about that for a minute? Have you thought about that, that God loves you unconditionally, no matter how awful you might think you are? And what was it the other day somebody was talking bad about their sales, and I mean the other person jumped in and said, you're talking about my best friend, so you need to stop. I want those people in my life to remind me that I'm precious. I am. God says so in his word. God don't lie, does he? Well, thank you, ma'am. It's hard for you to, to say that about yourself, but to, to my dad, to, to my God, I am precious. The only one qualified to throw a stone didn't. Think about that one for a minute. His unconditional love. No matter how many times I turn around and go the wrong way, and he hollers for me, and I realize I'm out from under his umbrella of, of love and protection, and I holler, help, he runs back to meet me. God's unconditional love for me. And it's with my kids. You know, I like to talk about Cowboy because I'm with him more than I am the others. And that his mom mom told him the other day on Friday she's home and Monday she works from home. So a lot of times he'll stay over there for a little bit. And she's like, you know, Nanny's going to think you don't love her if you don't go see her. And he, she said he looked, put that hand on his hip, looked her in the eyes and said, uh, Nanny knows I love her. That's how confident we should be in God's unconditional love for us. If he throws a fit and falls on the floor and he doesn't do that much anymore, praise the Lord, but he has had an anger issue, I didn't say, I don't want to sit with him anymore. Not one time did I think that. I love him unconditionally, no matter what happens to him. Now, do I love everybody that way? I'm working on it. Okay? I kept getting some text messages yesterday, and I was like... It's my birthday. I do not want to deal with it today. And then I felt like a dog. I was like, they might really need you today. So I apologize to God and myself for, for being that way. But sometimes you just need a breath, right? You got to fill back up. Anyway, in Luke 6, 35, it says, But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. I'm going to tell you all, to pray for your enemies is, is an act of obedience. And I believe that obedience is better than sacrifice. The Word says that. So when I'm preaching to me this morning, I know I am. I don't feel like I'm a, an unforgiving person at all, but until I am or a judgmental person until I am, you know? And then you have to go back and apologize and regroup and fill back up. When I get churchy, it's usually when I haven't spent enough time in the Word and with God. 
God don't ever turn his back on me, and he doesn't on you either. I'm his favorite, but so are y'all. And the way I understand that's with my family. I love every one of them. Everybody accuses me, cowboy's my favorite. I said, no, he's my favorite cowboy. And you're my favorite Joe, and you're my favorite Becca, and you're my favorite Lou, and you're, you know. I have the ability to do that. I do. And if I have that ability, do you think how much more God has to be able to do that? In 1 John 4, 7, and 8, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. I think the Bible is a love book, a love letter to us. I like the um, Passion Translation, and so I'll read it in the New King James I don't read King James because he talks funny. I don't always get it in the King, in the King James, so I like the, the New King James. But the, the Passion Translation, it's like a love letter to me from God. Now you tell me, if God wasn't in love with me, unconditionally in love with me, would he send his own, his, the one and only son he had to be crucified? No, how could he? He had to love me unconditionally to be able to do that. Can you imagine God the Father having to turn his back on Jesus because Jesus took the, the sin of the whole world on him and God couldn't look at him? That had, to, that had to crush God that day. I believe that with my whole heart. But you know, Jesus came to the cross knowing. He, he was born knowing he was going to die for me. That's big, Roddy. That's as big as you can get it. I love y'all with all my heart, I do. And if you know me, you know I mean that with everything in me. But I wouldn't die for you. Now, that one sitting right there is a different story. <laughs> different story. And I say I wouldn't. It would have to be the circumstances. You know what I'm saying? I think if they came and said, I'm fixing to, she's got to go, and Talon was going to be left without his mama, I'd probably do that for you. <laughs> I love you. Y'all, I, I love y'all. I do. Mm. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. At the top, love always floats to the top, doesn't it? When we're in right standing with God, you're going to love more. You're going to do more kind acts or acts of kindness when you love people, right? Romans 8, 35 who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I don't believe anything can separate me from the love of Christ except me. That's, that's my responsibility to stay close. But even when I get away from him, he's not mad at me for that. I'm mad at me for that. Because I've, I've blocked my blessings. And I think I've done the umbrella thing with you. Come be God or, yeah, come be God. My nose. I believe that pretend she's God, the umbrella. And I believe if we want to, we can get right in Dad's lap. Right in Dad's lap. But I'll get busy in the morning. I'll be back. I promise I'm coming back. We'll talk after a while, okay? I'm sorry. I, I, I got to go take care of Cowboy. I'll be back. I'll be back. And then I find myself out here getting the fire beat out of me. Who moved? Me, not God. But when I turn around and say, help, and I do a lot, he runs, runs to me. Runs. He never moved. He never withdrew from me. He never thought that knucklehead's at it again. Well, he might have thought that. I love you. That's a good girl right there for y'all. I wish y'all had one. <laughs> God's good. He's not looking. My God's not looking for a reason to whip me. He's work, uh, looking for a reason to help me. He wants me to have good things. I believe that. That's, that's where we have to get to the point of the unconditional love is that God loves us. If there was nobody else on this earth but me, he would have still sent his only son. That's how much he loves us. Get it? This is yes. 
I'm teasing y'all. My phone keeps going quiet on me. Romans 5.5, 5, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. See, he's, God's given us all the tools even, but we choose not to even find out what they are. They're all in, this is my Bible, y'all. I've got like 20 translations right here. Um, he loves us. He gave us the tools. He's, uh, he has the ability to love and provide for me way beyond what, any, what I can even imagine. But, where it got? I can try to give Roddy something, but if he don't want it, don't take it. Act like he ain't going to take it. <laughs> I want you to have it. And he's going, I don't really want it. Do you do that? I guarantee you have. God's been trying to get something to you, and it might not be the way it looked to you the way you wanted it. So you're like, eh, that can't be God. Well, maybe it is God. He wants you to have everything. He doesn't want you to be sick. He doesn't want you to be poor. He doesn't want you to have anxiety. You know where my peaceful place is? In the meat shed with Jesus James cranked as loud as I can get them and dancing. I didn't used to dance. I was dancing in the shower this morning. I'm dancing every chance I get. As long as I can dance, I'm on dance. Y'all, y'all can't watch, but I can dance. We did Bible school at uh, Waco this year, and I danced three hours every day. Did not lose one pound. That's messed up. <laughs> we had fun. Bible school. If y'all have never got to participate in teaching the littles Bible school, Go get, go get it. It is so much fun. The first night we get up there and we're learning songs, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, they ain't going to get it. This is going to be tough this year. And the little bitties wouldn't, you know, the little, little, little ones, they just look at you like, you want me to do what? Play? I don't know. The last day, my mama pride swelled up. They knew all the songs. They knew all the motions. I was like, yes, yes. So... Sometimes it's a matter of giving, isn't it? It's not always about taking. If you want to be blessed, so give. Go, and I'm not talking about money. Money's good, but, but not the money. The time, the heart, the love, the teaching, just like your baby wanting to come up here and, and do the Pledge of Allegiance, you don't even know. I'm not his grandma, but my, I puffed up. I was like, y'all are doing something good over there with them babies. That's awesome. John 14, 21 says, Whoever has my commands and keeps them, is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Promises of God, right? And all we got to do is love him. Loving's not hard for me, y'all. I've had a good family. that We all loved each other. We're a bunch of huggers. That's why I used to. I never asked. I'd just go in strong for one. Now I'm like, I'm coming in strong. Is it okay? <laughs> and they're looking at you like, okay, go slow. But... I like to hug. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If we really believe that, we'd be on our face. I think we'd be on our face worshiping him for, for dying and being crucified for me. We, we are so complacent with what we believe, I think, sometimes. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Sometimes I think our lights are too bright. When you kind of grind them the, long, the wrong way, I'm always like, yeah, it might be a little much for them. 1 John 4, 7, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So if you've accepted the Lord and you ain't way out from under his umbrella, you ought to be loving on somebody, right? You ought to walk in Walmart and they ought to be looking at you like, why is she so happy? Well, to go in the restaurant and then look at her and say, there she is. She's grinning and smiling, and everybody always compliments me on my smile, but I have a lot to smile about. I'm happy. I'm healthy. My bills are paid. My kids are healthy. I am at my best when my kids are happy. I am to this day, and they're grown. I want my kids happy. I want them well cared for, and I'll go down dying to make sure that that happens for them. 
God's the same way. If he's truly my father, and he has the ability, right? I'm limited in my resources. He is not. He's not limited. And so he asks you to help me, and he asks you to help me, and he asks you to help me. And we stay on the road, and we talk about love. That's good stuff, right? I don't have a regular job. That's what I do. I preach, and I sing, and God has people keep us on the road. That don't make no sense, does it? It really doesn't in the world's eyes. That doesn't make any sense. In God's eyes, that makes perfect sense that he would want us out there, right? 1 John 4, 16. And so we know and rely on the love of God, the, rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. You know, I think a lot of times when Jeff was here, I'd get down from singing and I mean, a hundred people could come by and encourage you, but I was waiting on him, the validation of the one that meant the most to me. I miss that. Lou's real good about it. Yesterday morning, I got up to go in the house, and she had a, a red, white, and blue streamer over the front door. I walk in, and there's, well, it's supposed to be my banners were laying in a little puddle, but I locked them anyway. I go to the coffee pot, and there's a new blanket sitting there for me. She goes out of her way to make sure that I am well well cared for, and I love you for it. I'd love you anyway, but thank you. She's a, that's her, what do they call it? Yeah, that love language, yes. Me, I'm like, go get it yourself. You've got legs. <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> First Peter 4, 8. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sin. I'm going to leave it right there. Love each other. Don't be looking to be mad. Refuse to be provoked. Sometimes we're having a bad day. And I get, I get as mad as anybody. If somebody acts ugly when you're, you know, you're in the store, you go to the, ca- the checkout counter, and the lady's not very nice to you, that ruffles me up. I'm going, girl, you're getting paid for that. Come on, act right. And then I walk out, and God's like, she could have been having a bad day. I'm really sorry. You know, I'm human. Put my... <laughs> Usually I'm too real. <laughs> I don't do it a lot, just every once in a while. Anyway, do you have a song you could sing to close this? Or no? I don't know. Well, I'm down to talking about the grandkids now. I... Thank you, Lorraine. That's exactly how I love you. Anyway, if y'all, I'm going to stand down here if anybody needs prayer. Y'all come on. I'm in a praying mood this morning. I know that God wants you to have what you need and what you want. If he made you, if you want it more, and you're living and walking in the, in the love of the Lord, he made you want it. It says so in the Bible. He gives you the desires of your heart. So, you find it? Woo-hoo. Y'all come on. Thank y'all. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Carol and Hannah, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that they come and bless us with their time, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to repay their time in full, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this church. We just thank you for everything it means to us, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to be with us as we go through this week, put people in our life to spread the word to. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, as you've watched the the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that his plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the word, we realize that the word, uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that will be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, with the heart one believes unto righteousness. 
And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, uh, for any of you, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and by his blood, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.